Uh, hey everyone, PFA in the editing bay here. Uh, apparently you can hear the sound of my computer fan going in all of my audio for this episode. Oops, I didn't think you'd be able to pick it up, but it has. My computer is in hospice care. I'm moving things over to a new one. So the rest of Galileo will have this noise. Sorry. Uh, just imagine it's another part of Galileo that's broken. Well, finally part three of Galileo. Welcome to End of Mission, everyone. I'm the face of sarcasm. I I learn about space from... Who are you? Uh, I'm I'm Paul. I have a water buffalo. <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> I, I'm an aerospace engineer, which means I don't know anything about planetary geology. <laughs> <laughs> There's rocks and stuff, okay? That's, that's all I know. <laughs> so Galileo has a really interesting 400 Newton pressure fed engine. <laughs> yeah. oh man <laughs> all right let's keep going let's keep going so so the first so the the thing with a lot of these kinds of missions which you know they cost a lot of money is they have a set primary mission they they want to design the spacecraft and the equipment and all the science readings to go for a certain amount of time right it's called the primary mm -hmm. mission right and that's what we covered last episode that's the last episode it's two years. Now, in reality, most of these spacecraft can survive a lot longer. And, you know, it's up there. It's still working, mostly. It's been mm -hmm. up there. You can still do things. So they do what are called extended missions, right? Cassini was supposed to last like four years around Saturn, and it lasted, you know, 16 or whatever. 20, yeah, whatever it is. Well, it was a 20-year mission, but it took six years to get there. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, right. So... And this happens with uh, moon missions, Mars missions, right? 2001 Mars, o Mars Odyssey is still orbiting Mars. You know, <laughs> it launched in 2001. So that was 23 years ago. Yeah, that's, that's quite a long it, time. It's been there for a while. So we have, so the first extended mission was called the Galileo Europa mission. They named it that specifically so it wouldn't be called extended. <laughs> it's just, look, we're going to do more with this spacecraft, not just extend it. We're going to look at Europa because Europa is interesting. Right, okay. So this would go from December 8th, 1997 to the end of 1999. Okay, so another two-year... Uh, yeah. Basically another two-year mission. Now, uh, there's no Millennium Bug on this because this thing's too old for a Millennium Bug. <laughs> okay. It's caveman tech. But this would be done... <laughs> it's a tape recorder. Yeah, the tape recorder. Uh, so the budget for this would only be $15 million a year and a reduction to 20% of the staff that they started with. At this point, okay. most of the people had gone on to other greater projects like Cassini and probably some of the Mars missions because we're starting to gear up for Mars exploration at this point. Okay. So the big focus would be four main things. One, the Europa campaign. So they go look at Europa some more because Europa is really interesting. It's yeah. a monolith, you know? Yeah. Two, the Io campaign. Can we please actually look at Io up close this time? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all volcanic and stuff. It's really huh? cool. Three. It's beautiful. The Io Plasma Taurus. Okay. It's a, it's a weird... So what's going on is it's a byproduct of the energetic charged particles being shot out of Io's volcanoes interacting with Jupiter's magnetic field. Ooh, it's also called okay. the Jupiter Io Flux Tube, which is really cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a really cool thing. <laughs> <laughs> the Flux Tube. Yeah. It's like a flux capacitor, you know? Yeah. Travel through time with it. Yeah, so this is a flux tube. The flux and tube. then the, a Jupiter water study. They're looking for water on Jupiter. It's thirsty. A little thirsty. Yeah, Galileo's <laughs> been up there for a while. You know, 1989, this is 97. It's been up there for a while. It's getting kind of thirsty. Yeah, it needs a drink, you know? <laughs> so the other thing here is, for so going for somewhere like Io, it's way deep into Jupiter's radiation belt. So mm -hmm. they're actually putting more risk into the mission. Okay. Because... It's already done its primary mission. Why not keep going? That's the... Right, right. Yeah. And they're pretty much doing the same okay. thing, right? Fly by, fly by, fly by, fly by. <laughs> okay. So this would do seven flybys of Europa. Getting really close, if you can see. Right? 122 yeah. miles above the surface. And then kind of far away. But again, it's orbital mechanics going on here. So the first mm -hmm. flyby would actually be December uh, uh, 1997. So pretty much... So the last one was in November, and now they're going right back. Right, it's yeah. the next. It's the next orbit. <laughs> yeah. And so then, so then technically they did Callisto flybys, but those weren't as important. The primary focus was Europa and Io, so those are done mostly to get 
uh, Galileo to fly by Io, and then to do two Io flybys, which get really close in late 1999. Right? Yeah, jeez. Yeah. Save the, the part which might, which might break the spacecraft for the end. <laughs> yeah. Right? And then you can really up close to Io. And you can see kind of the orbital plot here, what's going on, what they want to do. Mm-hmm. And you can see just kind of the, the dynamics, what's going on with the flybys. Yeah. Getting in real close. And this is uh, this image here is... So this is one of the flybys. This is Europa 17, so this would have been... Uh, September 1998. Okay. Right, so September 24th, 25th. So on the 25th, they'll start turning on different cameras and doing different observations to look at different things, right? UVS oh. looking for Aurora, looking at Jupiter with NIMS, looking at Europa with NIMS. And then it would counter Europa on the 26th, right? Take pictures of it and then keep going. This would look at, I guess, a Taurus, and then it'd start beaming back data for the next flyby. So oh, okay. Clear up for the, yeah. Which so that's what's going on, and I, there's a whole document talking about like what angle it's coming in at too, like with Europa. But I didn't. I don't think I included that. Uh-huh. I should have. It's in. It's in the. There's like 37 references I have. It's in one of those. <laughs> okay. So these are results from the Europa mission. So the IO ones are probably the most exciting because we kind of already it's covered. IO. Yeah. So there's an incident where so I24 and I25 almost didn't happen. Uh-oh. So on I-24, a high-energy particle slammed through Galileo and caused a bit flip. Uh-oh. Which caused the spacecraft to go into safe mode. Uh, that's, uh... For like uh-oh. four hours. Yeah. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> yeah. Which, and then it went into safe mode on I-25 as well for another reason, but they fixed that. Oh, God. But what was interesting was they got images of an active volcano on the surface with a lava curtain, so lava trail... 20 kilometers or 12 miles long. Whoa. Yeah. Unfortunately, there wasn't that much science as they were hoping because software issues. Uh, yeah. Uh, so then Europa encounters pretty much verified what we already talked about, right? Mm-hmm. Surface ice, water ice, chunks, you know. Uh, right. So then they had some so they had a problem on E16 where it entered safe mode again because... so. So there's a spun and despun section, which we talked about you know, back in the beginning. Mm-hmm. There was an issue with that. Uh, there's an issue with the, what are called slip bearings. So there's a way, because you have to talk to them, right? And right. And that spot's spinning, so you have to you know, talk to them. There's an issue with that that they had to resolve. Uh, that caused, caused them to go to safe mode. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, jeez. So on E17, when, so this one actually, when it's looking at Jupiter, it sees mm-hmm. two giant white oval storms collide. Oh, yeah! Wow, I'm mean, awesome to see. Oh yeah, I have pictures of it. Oh, I have, well, I have one. Yes. I have a few pictures of it. Um, okay. Since so during the IO campaign near the end, since they're really close to the inner moons, they actually got pictures of them. Ooh, okay. So this is Europa in color up close. We already looked at part of this, right? This is the big, yeah, the big guy. Yeah. The big river. Yeah, and these, yeah. Are, and these are false color images. It doesn't actually look this red. We've, again, we've seen real pictures oh, okay. from Juno. It's a yeah. color correction. A lot of false color images out. It, like the images of like the from Hubble are also enhanced, but shh, don't tell anyone. Okay. Shh, it's, it's our secret, guys. <laughs> keep, keep it between us and, yeah. you know, the internet. Yeah. But yeah, so this is, we've seen this one already. We've seen this part. But this is what it looks like in <laughs> color a lot closer. And wow. it's still stunning. Yeah, it's still, it's still incredible. It's just a gorgeous moon. Yeah. It's beautiful. It was all that ice and the... The line and the... The ridges. Yeah, the little dips and... Oh, yeah. Yeah, the big river flowing through the middle. And the cantaloupe. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so this... Yes, yeah, so this is another... This is a crater or something on Europa, and this is the... Yeah, yeah. what the heck? Yeah, so these are ridges up close, because again, these, we can, like I said before, these pictures are from this campaign specifically. So okay. these are chronological to, to the best of my ability. Okay. But look how... Just, look at that shape. What's doing that? What is that? Why is it doing that? Yeah. <laughs> it's so interesting. It's a... Yeah, we gotta go back. Oh, wait, we are. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> gotta go back <laughs> to the future. <laughs> this is more color images of Europa, and just so this is kind of that river, right? Yeah, this is what it really looks like. Huh. Kind of 
brownish, brown, rustyish. Yeah, which again, it's you know, don't eat the brown snow. <laughs> yeah, don't eat that one. Yeah. And it's amazing. And there's those ridges again. The right yeah. angle too. What's going on there? Why? Why is it doing that? I don't know. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Oh, there's that. There's that crater again. The thing we're looking. There's that spot. Yeah. Again, this is about 1,500 kilometers long. It's stitched wow. together by Kevin Gill. Again, want to make sure we got that in. <laughs> right. It's just. It's a shame we're not, a, not neither of us know anything about planetary geology. Yeah, it, there, there's like some ridges, some ice, I guess. You know, uh, and other there's paint lines from the roller. You can see. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Something's doing that. Got the brush strokes in there. Yeah. I left those in. It's just amazing. Yeah. But here's Io. Whoa. Yeah. So the Look these are some that. up close and personal images of Io. Wow. Right, 180 miles above the surface. We're getting close. We're taking pictures. Oh yeah. So these are different mountains on Io, right? There's a uh, uh, Hiaka Patera, which is named for a volcano in Hawaii. Uh, there's he- Makes sense. Hiacamantes. So this is again, this is a volcano. These are calderas of the volcano, like depressions. Oh, uh, uh, Chuck, weird. I know. It's so cool though. It's Looks so weird. It's, it's just these big mountains of sulfur. Yeah, it's all yellow. Yeah, you got these weird features, lava flows, probably. Yeah, just like cracks. It is. Wow. It's, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, so this is Io in sodium. So that's a sodium. It's very, very bright. Yeah, it's a lot of sodium on Io. Uh, yeah. And then this is, there's actually aurorae. These are auroras on Io. They're near the equator. Is it supposed to do that? Well, it's in Jupiter's magnetic field really intensely, and it's emitting high-energy charged particles. It's going to make yeah, okay. aurora. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so this, and this one here, this is that volcano I pointed out to you way... Uh, at the beginning. Yeah. So this yeah. part is the actual volcano. This is a caldera. Oh. It's actually a collapsed section of it. Huh. Yeah. And this is like, you know, like 50 miles across. <laughs> For course. reference. It's just enormous. And you, yeah. and you can see here, here's the ring of, uh, it's actually sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide. Yeah. <laughs> like you kind of made a, a Oh, yeah, I made face. a face. Well, yeah. I, didn't try, I didn't get a chance to draw the sun with a smiley face, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's move on. Let's move on. So this so is. So we don't. This is Tavishtar Patera, it's called. So, right, so this is 50 yeah. kilometers, right? This is an active yeah. volcano that uh, Galileo observed up close. As it, oh, as wow. It erupted, right? So this is actually infrared. This is an eruption. There's lava coming out of. Wow. Yeah. Uh, uh, wow. It's just it's it's there's there's stuff going on there. Yeah, look at look look at that. Look at like the formation, the, oh, the, yeah. the dips and the ridges and the flows. It's yeah. And the colors, like wow, it's an amazing. It's an amazing dynamic world. Yeah, it's, I mean it's constantly repaving itself with you know, each eruption. Yeah, it's going through a phase. It's just a you know, volcanic phase. It's not a phase. It's permanent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just like this. Gosh. Oh. Just gonna, just gonna keep doing that. Yeah, it won't stop. Can't stop. Won't stop. <laughs> so here is an up close image of a plume of a volcano, which is I think two hundred kilometers tall. Jeez. It's enormous. I think in the uh, the Millennium mission, I actually accidentally flew through a plume. <laughs> wow. They actually took uh, dust samples from uh, near plume on volcanic uh, areas. They better have. Yeah. Gotta count that dust. <laughs> Gotta count it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this is Tavishtar Patera, and it's it's erupting. So again, this is just different colors of sulfur at, at different temperatures. That's what all this is. There's some chemistry wow. going on, but it's mostly just heating. Yeah. Jeez. So these are some images of a volcano. Actually, that's the one I, we were just looking at. Uh, oh, this okay. one. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so that's that one, right? So it's, oh, okay. Yeah, so it's taking pictures of it, and you can see here, and the description here talks about this right here is a ring of frozen sulfur dioxide from the eruption. Oh, so it snowed it, basically. Yeah, because you got to remember, it's it's still in space. It's a Jovian moon. It's way yeah, out yeah. there. <laughs> it's really cold. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, it's just massive volcanism going on here. I forgot wow. what this one was for, and these. And these are just black and white, but yes, this is... 
they're looking at kind of uh, spectra of things from NIMS. Um, and yeah, yeah. Like, is that is that height maybe for the this one for D that might yeah, for that one. It, it, yeah, it could be because it might be yeah because a volcanic caldera, right? Because right because then it, it just piles up around yeah, it. Yeah, right? you can see there's some volcanoes. <laughs> there's so many volcanoes yeah. on Io. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's the volcano moon. Like, what, what do you expect? Yeah. <laughs> so here's some more uh, volcanoes on Io from the surface. Look, volcanoes and lava flows too. <laughs> wow, I never expected to see that on Io, I know, right? <laughs> Volcanoes on the volcano moon? <laughs> then, Unbelievable. So, oh. So these, these are the two great ovals. So this oval is the size is a little bit smaller than Earth. This oval is the size of Earth. <laughs> Jeez. And these two, so right, so this is February ninety seven. This is September uh-huh. ninety eight, right? Uh-huh. They kissed and became one. They, oh wow. They merged. Jeez. And so this is what they look like in real color. This is what they actually looked like. It's a bit more oh. orangish, reddish, right? Yeah, very dull. Kind of dullish. Again, all the images you see are really enhanced, unfortunately. But look at that. Again, yeah. Earth. This Earth. Yeah, I'll, I'll draw Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that's, this is Earth. What, what, what's that? Con- oh, okay. There's the North American continent. I there's see. Cuba. And there's oh, right to the Great Lakes. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's Earth, and it's a storm the size of it, and it hit another storm the size of Earth, and, <laughs> and they became one. It's amazing. Jeez. Wow. Just enormous storms. It's yeah, yeah. It's just, you know two the size of Earth merged into one. Yeah, bigger than Earth. It's fascinating. It. And then okay, so these are the moons. I got them in the wrong order. Okay. Oh. So there's Amalthea. Which is okay. It's two hundred fifty. He finally spelled it correctly. Yeah, Amalthea. It's this one. This is Amalthea. A. Okay. This is the reddest object in the solar system. Really? Yes, it is. It's communist. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, the moon is red, comrades. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's. A, or is it red to make it go faster? It might be. Or it's just embarrassed. Uh, yeah. It's embarrassed. I think this is actually one of the last moons. I said this before. It's one of the last moons discovered with like telescopes like observation with uh makes makes sense yeah so it's a 250 kilometers roughly in diameter it's a bit of a lumpy potato uh mm-hmm. it orbits about 181,000 kilometers so it's you know kind of it's in there it's really close into jupiter and it yeah. orbits jupiter about 12 hours <laughs> <laughs> it's a half a day it's just cooking <laughs> So from the time that we started on this call and started recording these episodes, it's it's gone like a third of the way around Jupiter. Yes. Jeez. <laughs> it's going fast. <laughs> and that's why it's red. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's red shifted. It's going wait, no, that's the wrong way. Never mind, I'll I'll shut up. So then this okay. is Metis. Met Meti? Metis? Metis. It's the big M. it's the big source of dust in Jupiter's rings. It's about 60 by 40 by 34 kilometers. It orbits even closer to Jupiter over about seven hours and nine minutes. Wow. It, it's going fast. It's not even a full working day. Yeah. It's so lazy. Lazy. Wow. And we have uh, Thebe here, which is a big old crater. Again, it's got a mountain that's really big and then a crater. <laughs> it's giant. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the outer edge of the Thebe Gossamer Ring. Wow, that's uh, mm. I wonder what's going on there. Don't know. <laughs> uh, so this one's about 116 kilometers uh, maximum. It orbits farther out than Amalthea and Metis. There's also the other one, uh, Adrastea, but that's like a circle. That's kind of blurry. That's why I didn't include a picture of it. Oh, okay, it's just like a like a uh, soft spot. Yeah, it's kind of small and it's it's like 20 kilometers across. Uh, so okay. Thebe orbits. Uh, about 16 hours, 12 minutes. Okay, so it's a decent amount. Yeah, so I can I can drive back home to Minnesota in less time than this thing takes to orbit Jupiter. Well, wow, that's so slow. But it's pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the time I can drive from here back to Minnesota, Amalthea has orbited Jupiter once. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Yeah. It's weird. Is. Yeah, so this is what these look like. This is the only... These are the best images we got of them so far. Uh, it's not bad. Oh yeah, it's different, yeah. Like, different surface features, right? What's what's this? I, again, I remember reading about what the surface features were. I just kind of forgot to include those. It looks like it's blown out. Yeah. 
Interesting, interesting wounds. I'll say that. Yeah. 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 One's red, so it can go super fast. Yeah. Oh, whoa. Oh, yeah. All right. So now, it's December 1999. It's the end of the millennium. Galileo's still up there, and it's still somehow alive. <laughs> more science. Do some yeah, more. Got, Woo! We got way more dust to count. Yeah, there's none. Got to keep counting. Got to count them all. <laughs> this is called the Galileo Millennium Mission. Because it's the new millennium. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to go from January 2000 to March 2001, but that's extended to January 2003, and then just technically, technically ends into January, but the end of mission is September. I kind of put September 2003. Yes. Wow. Yep. Okay, so the big focus on this one is focus on the interaction of solar wind and Jupiter's magnetosphere. This will be aided by the Cassini spacecraft, which flies by Jupiter in late January 2000. Oh, wow. Yes. Uh, Observe the dynamics of Jovian dust streams. There we go. Yes, counting that dust. (laughs) Observe Io in eclipse to see what it looks like, like infrared and that kind of thing. Uh, Okay. Uh, And then continuing observations of Jupiter's atmosphere, because... Just can't take your eyes off. It's amazing. So, it's going to do another, what, eight orbits? So, it's going to do Europa, really close, 218... Just 218, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Just 218. <laughs> More up close with Io. Another one of Ganymede for fun. Uh, do mag- some magnetosphere work for about, what, six months? June to November 2000. Five months, yeah. Yeah. Uh, go back to Ganymede, do Callisto, back to Io, Io, Io. And then, for the final flyby, it's going to go 100 miles away from Amalthea. Wow. Okay. Now, I will note, at this point, Galileo is starting to really show its age. <laughs> it's outside its operational lifetime. It's also been baked in an intense radiation environment. Things are starting to degrade. More than they already were? <laughs> yes. Uh, for example, the tape recorder failed after the observation of Amalthea. Oh. But they actually fixed it. I remember reading this. So what they use for when it's the, re, the memory tape is moving is an LED. But at that point, the LED had faded to 40% of its brightness, so it couldn't actually read it to detect <gasps> it. So what oh, they no. did was they kept the LED on, because it, it was in space so long and the radiation messed with it, that they mm-hmm. had it on for so long that it recrystallized in the right way. So it was brighter. It was oh. Something like that. It was some <laughs> weird, weird thing. Some weird material science magic. Star Trek just stuff. <laughs> yeah, we got to recrystallize the dilithium crystal. Yeah, something like that. Uh, so that's kind of... Galileo is kind of breaking. So these are the orbits that it's going to do. Okay. Right, still doing more flybys, but you can kind of see they're kind of really aiming to just kind of get as much as they can out of it before it dies. Yeah. And then this is a, a, a diagram of Cassini, because Cassini's really cool. <laughs> oh, Yeah. Wow, that's just loaded up with stuff. Oh, it's got a lot of things on it. Cassini's cool. So <laughs> it's going packing. <laughs> so this is so. Uh, oh no, it's December two thousand. That's when it was. What did you say before? January. I got like too confused. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They're easy to confuse months. You know, beginning at the end of the year. Yeah. Complete opposite sides of the calendar. Yeah, yeah it's, it's easy to confuse. Yep. So, so on G twenty nine, it's gonna fly by Ganymede, while Cassini just barrels through the system. On its way to Saturn. Just, just shroom. <laughs> yep. Just barreling through. So, here's some of the results mm-hmm. from this part. Io, more volcanism. Wow. A wow. lot more than expected. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. They, so, one area they anticipated would have four volcanoes. It had 14. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> uh, at one point, they accidentally flew through the limb of a plume that was 500 kilometers in size jeez it got through the edge of so it it's just it, it, it's so what, what part of it's 500 kilometers is it 500 kilometers tall yeah. 500 kilometers oh wow or, i think it was both because it's like spherical yeah oh jeez. yeah it's amazing <laughs> God. they also confirmed wow. that io has no magnetic field okay because jupiter just melted i guess <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> uh so Europa, they discover that its magnetic field varies based on the moon's position around Jupiter. Oh. 
Okay. Uh, Ganymede, there really wasn't much they were doing. They're mostly focusing on uh, the Cassini encounter and that. So they took some pictures of Ganymede. Uh, they did some magnetic field data, but not much as interest in Ganymede itself. Okay. And then with Callisto, they took pictures of Asgard, Valhalla, and Bran craters. But the Callisto flybys were mostly to set up the IO encounters. Okay. So they saw uh, Bran in his wheelchair, right? I have not seen enough Game of Thrones to know, but I know that's what that that guy is, right? <laughs> yeah, you know enough. <laughs> I know enough. <laughs> so let's take it, we'll get more uh, some more pictures of, of this system. Because okay. it's amazing. Look, recent sulfur volcanism on, on Io. So look, so there's a big depression. Like a, I think it's a cave-in or something like that. Uh, that's oh. about 100 kilometers across. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, the, just half the state just sunk uh, one day, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then, as you can see, there's more you know, hot spots. Those are all volcanoes. <laughs> and they think this is a shield volcano that they discovered. <laughs> Again, another one. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, another volcano on the volcano planet. I know, weird. <laughs> it's bizarre. Yeah, it's Unexpected. just... Unexpected. It's just volcano, 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 volcano. <laughs> hey, what's that? Oh, that's a volcano. That's a volcano. Oh, what's that? That's a volcano. Wow. What about that? Oh, that's a mountain. Really? No, it's a volcano. <laughs> it's amazing. And this is a like an up-close look at a caldera or something like that. Isn't it? But the, the chemistry here is what interests me most, because... Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It's oranges and reds and yellows, and then the kind of the greenish like greens. Black. Yeah. Now, again, some of this is false color imagery. Remember, it's enhance right but right it's just so it, weird it, it, looking. it has an outline in parts yeah like like a dark line going around it that's that's it's so weird yeah <laughs> you know what you know it's really depressing what so there was actually a mission proposal called uh the io volcano observer that was yeah. going to be one of the big missions i think it was part of the discovery program that was uh was not funded in favor of the two next Venus missions. Oh. Which is a big bummer, if you ask me, considering I think the outer planets are more interesting, but yeah, that's just me. A normal person. Yeah. <laughs> that's just you. Yeah. So here's more. So here's some mountains. <clears throat> Sorry. Look at those. Look at that. It's just big old mountains. Giant mountains. Huge piles of rocks. And sulfur. And look, there's another caldera. <laughs> yeah. Radagast yeah. Patera. Radagast. <laughs> Radagast. Sounds like, yeah, that sounds That's like a... some 1820s guy. <laughs> Radagast. <laughs> what are you doing on that machine? On that contraption? <laughs> yeah, he pulls on a pocket watch. Ah! <laughs> I'm going to this place, digging for gold. <laughs> It's a penny farthing. <laughs> yes. And uh, then you got Toehill Mons right here. Mm-hmm. And Shadow, because it's on the, it's the side Yeah, of it's on Io. the Terminator. Look, a shield volcano. A w- on the volcano world? I know. There's a bunch of sulfur. Wow. And just lava flows, too. Look at those. Yeah. It's amazing. Wow. And with this coloring, it looks kind of like a mountain range with snow on top of it. On the second, on the bottom yeah, images. Yeah, yeah. But you look at this one. Oh, there's a big red orange spot because it's a volcano on Io. Yeah. <laughs> it's just amazing. There were just erupts and then snows, sulfur dioxide. Yeah. And uh, so this is again another shot of Io. It's di- all the pictures of Io are different. <laughs> oh, look at that mountain. Yeah, yeah look at that. Look at those mountains. Look at the wo- Look how tall that one must be, because it's behind the... It's in the shadow. Yeah. Entirely. Man. Wow. It's an amazing world. And then you have Europa. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and then, yeah, there's Europa. Yeah. Oh, and this is uh, Amalthea up close again. Amalthea. Yep. And this is also the limb of Io, because I found this one that looked really good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. Wow. So many volcanoes. So much sulfur. It's so interesting. Uh, this is the Great Red Spot with one of the moons. What? <laughs> Jeez. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Isn't that cool? It got this, this shadow. 
Yep, there's there's a shadow. Actually, I was, I was thinking of putting some images from Cassini when Cassini did the flyby because you could see the moons. Yeah, I yeah. should have done that. I did. Yeah, I did. no, it's okay. We're just getting images I'm strictly st- from Galileo. Yeah, I'm stupid, I guess. That's okay. Don't worry. Yeah. About it. And look at that. Look at all the swirly. Look at all the swirling gases oh, yeah. mixed together. Yeah. It's just incredible. It's a beautiful, beautiful world. It's dynamic. It's a very beige world. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. Got the orange and the blues and the whites. It's ammonia, and hydrogen, and helium all swirling together. Some sulfides. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> we dropped a probe in it, you know, so many years ago, and it just said, witness me, yeah. and it's like, witnessed. <laughs> yeah. It's just, Wow. All these, and these storms are bigger than Earth. <laughs> Probably not these, but, ah, you know. This one like, <laughs> that one might be. But I mean, like, a, they're still giant. Oh, you yeah. Know, these storms are bigger than the, the moons that orbit them. Those moons are huge. They're the size of planets. It's amazing. It really is. Yeah. yeah. We're actually, Gorgeous world. Because we're actually at, um, this is the end. We're at the end. That's all, folks. So, at 11.47 in the morning, Pacific Daylight Time, on September 21st, 2003, Galileo plunged into the atmosphere of Jupiter and burned up. Wow. Normally, uh, for, like, the Mariner probes, they're just left in orbit. In fact, I think Mariner 9 crashed into Mars recently, or at least should have. Oh, but with this one, nice. they wanted to crash into Jupiter so it wouldn't contaminate Europa. Ah, because all these worlds are yours except Europa, make no attempt. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Galileo spent 13 years, 11 months, and 3 days in space. Wow. Yeah, the culmination yeah. of something that happened on January 7th, 1610. Wow. Which is amazing to think about. Nearly 400 yeah. years before. Yeah, 393. Yeah. And you can see all the models and all the diagrams are updated to, to match the current state of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is actually taken in the Von Karman Auditorium, where they do a bunch of these announcements and show all these big pictures from images coming in. And they did the mm. countdown. So and you can see here, so this, I think it's, yeah, a minute and 20 seconds before it hits. But it'd still take about an hour for the data to come back to confirm it. Ah. Yeah. Wow. And I want to emphasize here, we're, we are at the end of end of mission. Ha ha, hey. But there, <laughs> hey. there are so many more images you can see of Jupiter and its moons up close and personal. Uh, the data is just endless. This is, you know, the first mission to orbit Jupiter. Yeah. It learned so much and opened up a lot to see. Yeah. Got up close images of all of these different moons and showed what the, those worlds are like. And it's just, we're scratching the surface of them, too. That's the thing. Right? Yeah. We go there and we see, okay, this is what it looks like. Why? Yeah, yeah. Right? Why, why are those ridges like that on yeah. Europa? <laughs> Look at all this volcanism. What's doing that? Why is there a magnetic field on Ganymede? <laughs> what are these rings on Callisto from? <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. Again, if we were to talk about all the results from Galileo, we'd be sitting here for the next three years, just going through all of it. Uh, we're not going to do that. <laughs> so yeah. NTRS has a bunch of data. Have fun, though, with trying to figure out how to search through that. Uh, you can look, I look at uh, Google Scholar sometimes. It helps to find data. JPL has a document database you can look through. Also an image gallery. That's where I got a lot of my images from. Mm. So in terms of results, which we've discussed quite a few, these are the mm-hmm. top 10 as determined by NASA. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> the descent probe measured atmospheric elements and found that they are different than the sun. So Jupiter's atmosphere is different than the sun's in terms of composition. So Jupiter is not the sun. Okay. But what it really means is Jupiter has evolved since it formed from the solar nebula. Oh. That's what that means. Okay. Yes. Okay. Right? Uh, This is the first observation of ammonia clouds and on another planet. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So it just hadn't been discovered before. Yeah. Well, we're first up close look at them. We theorized that they existed, 
but now you confirm them. Uh, okay. Uh, Io's volcanism was 100 times that of Earth's. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> this is an angry little guy. <laughs> yeah. This is an angry little world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Io's complex plasma interactions within its own atmosphere include support for currents and coupling with Jupiter's atmosphere. So it's actually, they're like like holding hands atmospherically. It's... It's a really, really weird... Again, this is why that mission being canned is disappointing to me. Because <laughs> yeah. it's a weird dynamic system that's going on. Dang. Evidence supports the existence of liquid oceans on Europa. Yeah, having the... the Having those materials in that ocean swirling around, creating the mm-hmm. magnetic field, yeah. Ganymede has a distinct magnetic field. <laughs> good, good job, Ganymede. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> Uh, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto have liquid salt water layers. Yeah, and obviously Io does not. No, no. well, it might have. <laughs> it's gone now. <laughs> Threw it out. Ch- yeah, chucked that out into space a while ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto have evidence of a surface-bound exosphere. So they have a little atmosphere. Okay. Io does, too. It's made of sulfur. <laughs> <laughs> like everything else. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, the floor is sulfur, the ceiling is sulfur, arguably the air we're breathing is sulfur. Yep. <laughs> uh, Jupiter's ring system is formed by dust from interplanetary meteorites impacting the inner moons. The outermost ring is actually two. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, that, that makes sense. That's why it's so faint. Yeah. yeah. And then Galileo spent enough time in Jupiter's magnetic field to identify its global structure and dynamics. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because think about it, 13 uh, years, and 11, almost 14 years, right? Yeah. Jupiter orbited the sun once. Well, you got to remember, it time. reached Jupiter in 1995. So it, it was around Jupiter for about half a year. Or most of a year. Right? Eight years out of, out of yeah. 11 eight years or 12. Of, yeah, so about half a year or so, a little more. Yeah, so th- two-thirds of a year. So, yeah, it was able to observe Jupiter's magnetic field, characterize it, observe some dynamics, and... It's so fascinating. Yeah. So this is... Um, so there, So Galileo is one of a kind, but it won't be anymore. Yeah. Right now, there is the Juno spacecraft orbiting Jupiter. It was launched in 2011, and it's just looking at the, the poles, actually, of Jupiter. So that's what it's focusing on. Yeah, it examines Jupiter's magnetosphere, atmosphere, and polar magnetosphere. Okay. Yeah. And it's it's been returning images of the Galilean moons. We've seen some of them. Io and Europa most recently. Mm-hmm. Which yeah, are... There's also an image of, of Ganymede, right? Oh, really? From, from Juno, I thought it was. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a, Juno's going on. It's a really cool mission. It's really interesting. Yeah. And it's just so many stunning images oh. of, of Jupiter. And I think Juno Cam was an add-on for public relations. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, right now, uh, the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer is heading on its way to Jupiter. It launched back in April of last year, in 2023, and mm. it's going to examine the Icy Moons again. Nice. It's going to do similar flybys of uh, Europa, Callisto, and Ganymede, and it's actually going to enter orbit around Ganymede in December 2034. Oh, wow. So, so it's stay, staying around it. Yeah. They're going to crash it into Ganymede at the end of mission. Wow. Yep. Uh, it's yeah, also... Like 20 years from now. Uh, yeah. Well, at least in 10 years from now, it'll be on its way to getting ready to orbit Ganymede. Yeah. This, yeah. this spacecraft, by the way, is like, weighs like six tons at liftoff. It's really <laughs> heavy. I imagine. I mean, you're, you're going there to do all this stuff, so you need it. And you know what's funny? It has a tape recorder on it? No. Oh, okay, uh, good. This antenna here, the big long guy, uh-huh. got stuck. It, during, it got stuck. deployment, yes. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> they fixed it. Don't worry. It's deployed. But there, there actually were some pictures from Juice after it launched. Uh, you could actually see the antenna, and it was stuck. <laughs> <laughs> so it's on its way to, to Jupiter right now. It's going to take 100 months to get there. It's a lot of months. Well, again, it weighs six metric tons. Nothing can toss it to Jupiter directly. Oh. Not even SLS, I don't think. Really? Yeah. I don't oh. think so. 
So it's going to do multiple Earth and Venus flybys even more than Galileo did. Oh, so it's not going to do the the Vega. It's going to be it's like a Vega. Lot more. That's more what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's coming up. Actually, I think it's coming up to one of them. Yeah. It's, really? Yeah. And actually, Cassini on its way to Saturn did Vega as well. Oh, okay. Because it worked the first time. Might as well work the second. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, hmm. Yeah, so then, right now, being built at JPL, the same place that built Galileo, is Europa Clipper. Ooh. Which is going to launch in October of this year. Ooh. It's going to fly up on a Falcon Heavy. There's a big debate on if we should fly on uh, SLS versus Falcon Heavy. And I'll tell you, there was an interesting interesting debate. So how long do you think Europa Clipper is going to take to uh, get to Jupiter? Uh... Two years? Six years. Why is it going to take six it's years? It's on Falcon Heavy. Falcon Heavy can't toss it directly to Jupiter, but you know what can? SLS. SLS, but it's not going to do that anymore. It's, oh. it's being built. Again, it's the same thing. It's the same problem. So they had to... So the funniest, the, the funniest part of all of this was everyone was saying, see, I told you Falcon Heavy is so much better than SLS in all these ways. You talk about total mission cost savings by using Falcon Heavy. $150 mm-hmm. million dollars out of like a $2 billion dollar budget. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at those savings. Yeah, because they had to modify Europa Clipper to go fly by Venus. <laughs> Just like Galileo. <laughs> Just like Jews. <laughs> so this one specifically is going to do flybys of Europa and get up close and personal pictures of it again. Because they're trying to figure out, you know, what's the subsurface ocean even like? Yeah. Try to characterize it by these flybys. Uh, and other surface features, of course. But this is it. This is it being built right now. That's the core of it. That's the big oh, dish. Wow. So Juno's already there. Juice just launched, yep. and Europa Clipper is under construction. Yep. Oh, this is this is exciting. This is be exciting. <laughs> well, in 2030, when we finally get there, it's gonna be an exciting uh-huh. decade of science around Jupiter. Oh, that's gonna be awesome. I think the Chinese are planning a mission. I think Tianwen Four might go there. Awesome. Yeah, the Chinese are going. Uh, Japan's not interested. I mean, they, they just landed on the moon recently, Yeah, right? and it died. Yeah, yesterday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, okay. different priorities. But, yeah, so this is what the... They're, they're building Europa Clipper. It's going to Jupiter. There have been so many studies for Jupiter orbiters uh, since then. Since during the Galileo period and after, including Europa landers. Ooh. There have been plans for those. Ooh, that's exciting. Yeah. So that is Galileo. Wow. A massive <laughs> flagship mission to Jupiter and its moons. <laughs> I think one, that is incredible. one of the most astounding things about Galileo, I think, is pretty much every picture we have of Jupiter and its moons is from this mission. Yeah. Every time you look at a textbook. Because it, it, it was there. Yeah, it's the only one that was there. <laughs> until now. Until, yeah, until now. Which is just, yeah. it's an astounding mission. It really is. It is. It is incredible. Just all the imagery, all the science, all the data, and through all the troubles oh, yeah. <laughs> that it went through. Everything <laughs> broke. <laughs> <laughs> it used to, this caveman technology oh, that they threw under a tarp for three years. <sighs> and the part that I was thinking about when I was reading about this was, wait, 2003, I was alive for this. I was, a, I was around. I was conscious. I was... You know, out and a, I mean, I was out and about, I was in third and fourth grade when this thing ended. Yeah. That's the part that I find weird to think about. Yeah. Like, Shrek 2 was coming out in theaters, I think. I'm not going to dignify that with a response. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there was all that, because I remember all the hype about the Mars rovers, which launched in 2004. I remember all that hype. That's when I really got into space. It was around 03, 04. Mm. Right around the time this yeah. mission ended. Which yeah. is strange to think about, because they started building this thing in 1983, and it finally died in 2003. 30 years. 20 years. Yeah, that's 20 years. 20, Sorry. Yeah. Get your dates mixed up. Yeah, I'm t- I'm t- <laughs> At least I don't, you know, do, uh, you know, misspellings. That was my, that was my hard drive. Okay, <laughs> the... the the, the tape memory on it got stuck, okay? <laughs> I had to go back and tell it not to record on this part of the tape. Yeah, this part of my hard drive. Don't go here. 
but not for not for the reasons you're thinking. <laughs> uh, it was a misclick. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, we're, no. Um, yeah, I just think this mission's so interesting. It's just you really appreciate. Yeah. It's kind of weird that no one really thinks about Galileo as much. Yeah, but it's such an incredible mission. Looking back and seeing what it what it did and the accomplishments that it has. Yeah, because everyone remembers Cassini. I think it's because of the social media aspect to it. Yeah, everyone remembers Cassini. Everyone remembers Voyagers, right? Everyone kind of got excited about Juno and then forgot it existed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no one talks about Galileo. And everyone, everyone talks about it. They just talk about, oh yeah, the antenna broke. Yeah, which yeah, that definitely was a massive hindrance. But it still, it still pushed through. Oh yeah, it survived. It. it still did incredible work. It's a stunning mission. It really is, and it's worth it. I think this thing cost in total about two billion dollars. Yeah, that's okay. You think about it, yeah, it's a flagship class mission. The, the Mars rovers right now cost about two billion dollars. Makes sense. Right? Yeah, and we saw we saw a world, and now we have to go back to see more. We now we know what yeah what's going on, what's really going on there. Yeah, it's so interesting. That is it's so fascinating. They counted a lot of dust. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so much dust. <laughs> Eventually, we will be able to count all of the dust. Yeah, we have to. That's that's our goal. That's the real purpose of life, the universe, and everything. <laughs> that's that is all. Well, that is what all of these scientific you know, space explorations are really about: is mastering and perfecting the art of counting dust. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you think about this mission? Any favorite parts? I mean. What's not to like? I mean, there's so much. Just the incredible, incredible imagery. The it's just, yeah, I, yeah. It's yeah. just. I mean, the lesson from this that, that I took away from that is, even though every, pretty much everything on it broke, uh, it still persisted. It still went through. It still accomplished so many of its objectives. It's a tough guy. Yeah, it's resilient. It's a tough guy. It's inspiring. Yeah. And we're going back. Yeah, and now we're going back. It's an amazing mission. Yeah. It's so cool. To Jupiter and beyond. Yeah. So in the next episode, <laughs> we're going to do STS-39. Okay. That uh, that looks like a problem. There. It's not. It, it's, it's a science experiment. This picture is the reason I picked this mission. There's no other reason. I saw this picture and went, what on earth is going on? It's a science experiment. So Great cool. Scott. Yeah. This is cool. You see there's the, the shuttle glow and there's, yeah, there's, uh, I know what they're emitting because I've been doing the slides for this one <laughs> for last week. It's a really cool mission. That's STS-39. Uh, any more concluding <laughs> remarks? Um, you go back one slide. Wave goodbye to the Galileo and the it's, plasma wave detector. So it's waving right now. So I'm doing the little wave noises. Uh, the, yeah, no, the, the motion. There button. it is. Yeah. Goodbye, well, Galileo. Galileo. That was Galileo. We are not doing Cassini for a very long time. There's a lot more pictures. There's a lot more going on there. Cassini's yeah. years away. Yeah. Yeah. We're not doing Cassini for a while. Yeah. Well, all right, but, then. Yeah. Until next time, this has been... End of mission.